Welcome back to Movie Recap. Today I will show you a drama, thriller film from 2018, titled 10 by 10. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie starts with our protagonist, Kathy Newland, going through her usual routine. She works at her flower shop, has breakfast at the diner across the street, and goes to her yoga classes. All the while, she is followed by a strange man called Robert Lewis. While Kathy is at yoga, Lewis waits outside. He checks out her car before retrieving a gun, a plastic bag, zip ties, tape, and a newspaper from his trunk. After tossing all those things on the front seat of his car, he keeps on waiting, and he receives a call from his maid, Alondra, who confirms everything is alright for tonight. After the yoga lessons are over, Kathy chats with another woman in the changing room and clearly shows disapproval when the woman implies she wants to cheat on her husband. Afterward, she goes to the parking lot, ready to go home, but she barely makes it to her car before Lewis jumps on her. He covers her head with a plastic bag and throws her to the floor, trying to suffocate her, but Kathy manages to push him off and take off the bag. She cries out for help, but the only person nearby has headphones on and doesn't hear her. This gives Lewis the chance to grab her again, and he tells her he'll kill her if she makes another sound before he covers her mouth with tape and ties her wrists and ankles with the zip ties. Kathy is left on the floor while Lewis goes back to his car, waits for the vehicle next to Kathy to leave, then takes over that parking spot. There, he picks Kathy up and locks her up in his trunk before driving away. On the way to his house, a police car stops next to his at the traffic light, but he plays it cool and manages not to arise suspicion. When he makes it home a few moments later, the garage door gets stuck midway, so he has to finish raising it himself and sticks a broom under it to keep it up. Lewis takes the time to turn around the car and enter the garage in reverse gear, so the trunk goes inside first. He takes Kathy out of the trunk and drags her through the house as her bleeding feet leave bloodstains on the floor. She is taken to a 10 by 10 cellar, which Lewis locks up and hides behind a fake wall and a table with a vase on it. While Kathy struggles against her bindings, Lewis puts some food in the oven and goes to his car to retrieve his things and her bag, then he pays Kathy a visit. He informs her the walls are soundproof so there's no point in yelling, then tells her he'll take off the tape so she can tell him her name. After Kathy nods her understanding, Lewis removes the tape, but she only starts screaming again, so he leaves her alone and goes to his office. He checks his computer to make sure everything in the cellar is being recorded, then mutes the sound. Afterward, he starts cleaning the bloodstains on his floor. Kathy manages to stand up and starts hitting the door with her whole body to no avail. Kicking the wall panels doesn't work either, so she decides to try something else when she notices the room has a vent. She comes as close as possible to it and tries to scream for help, but the house is in a remote location, so nobody can hear her. While listening to an old news recording that mentions a case being reopened when proof of three deaths not being natural appears, Lewis loads his gun and goes to see Kathy again. She asks him not to touch her and offers him the $50,000 she has in savings, Lewis points out that is a lot of money for someone in her line of business. But he doesn't want her money, he wants her to tell him her name. She responds Kathy Newland, which disappoints him and makes him leave. Back in the kitchen, Lewis goes through Kathy's bag, but he doesn't find anything useful, so he goes back to watching old news reports. This time, the reporter says the proof didn't end up being enough to prove unnatural death, so the case was closed again, and the family's plan to fight that decision. While Lewis goes back to cooking, Kathy puts her best effort into bending her body and manages to get her bound hands in front of her. When Lewis goes to get her for lunch, Kathy is waiting for him behind the door and wastes no time in attacking him. She punches him until he's on the floor and kicks him as she leaves the room, once outside, she grabs the vase from the table and smashes it on his head. Kathy drags herself to Lewis' office and tries to call the police using the land phone, but Lewis shows up and shoots it. When he comes closer, she grabs a paperweight from the desk and hits him with it, leaving him unconscious on the floor for a few seconds. She goes to the kitchen and finds her cell phone in her bag, but it has no signal, so she searches the drawers for a knife and cuts off the bindings on her ankles before trying to leave the house. Unfortunately, all the doors are locked. Lewis wakes up then and Kathy asks him how he knows what her occupation is, but his only reply is to sit at the table and invite her to have lunch with him. While he eats, he asks her for her name again, to which she answers Kathy Newland. Lewis reminds him he has a gun and guns beat knives, so Kathy accepts sitting at the table but doesn't touch the food. After pointing out that if he wanted her dead he would have already killed her, he asks for her name once more. Kathy gives her the same answer, which angers him and causes him to throw his plate at her face. They both leave the table as Lewis comes closer with his gun pointed at her, Kathy knocks it off his hands and tries to punch him, Lewis responds by pushing her against the kitchen counter. Kathy manages to get him off her by biting him, then she puts her bound wrists around his neck to choke him. However, it is not enough to leave him unconscious, so when she tries to escape, he knocks her out with a punch and takes her back to the cellar. When he returns to the kitchen, his maid Alondra is there. She came over because he never told her if he would need her today or not. 
Louis tells her she isn't needed and dismisses her, but Alondra insists on trying to clean up the broken dishes and take care of his wounds. Getting desperate, Louis tells her he's just having one of those days and tries to get her to leave again, Alondra hesitates but accepts and promises to return the next day with his daughter, who is currently at a sleepover. Louis cleans up the messes, puts the flowers in a new vase, and washes the bloody knife before checking on Kathy to put some butterfly bandages on her cuts. Afterward, he takes a shower and takes care of his own wounds, then he finishes his lunch in front of the TV, watching more old news recordings about the Charleston Three, a case of three patients dying under mysterious circumstances at the All Angels Hospital in Charleston. Meanwhile, Kathy retrieves her cell phone from its hidden place in her pants, but there's no signal. She puts it away when she discovers one of the floor tiles has cracked, so she starts working on trying to unstick the shard from the floor. Louis visits Kathy again, this time bringing a chair with him. He starts asking her questions about her personal life, her name, her birthday, her hometown, her school, her major, amount of siblings, her parents' professions, and her relationship with the church. Kathy answers them all, but Louis isn't satisfied. He tells her he's been following her around for months and he knows everything she just told him are lies, so he continues to press her for the correct information. Kathy finally changes her story when he shoots the wall. Her real name is Natalie Ann Stephen. She grew up with her twin sister Kathy, who killed herself when their father who was a doctor for a football team left their mom for a cheerleader. Natalie didn't give up and went on to study nursing like her mother. Now she has admitted what he wanted, Louis tells her she must be wondering why he's kidnapped her, but he only says she probably already knows before leaving the room again, taking the chair with him. As soon as the door is closed, both Kathy and Louis have an emotional breakdown. While Louis goes back to the living room to watch old videos of him with his family, Natalie starts working on the broken floor tile again. She doesn't make any progress there, so she takes out her phone once more and puts it against the vent, finally managing to get some signal. She dials 911 and tries to ask for help, which proves to be difficult because the signal is weak. Meanwhile, Louis sees a cell phone in the video and makes him realize she's taken her phone to the cellar with her. He rushes in right after she hides it, but he retrieves it from her pants and destroys it, leaving the broken parts on the floor. Another interrogation begins. Natalie admits having worked at All Angels Hospital, and Louis asks her about the patients that inexplicably died under her care, including his wife, Alana. Natalie reminds him there was a trial and all nurses were found innocent, she says she only left town because she needed a fresh start. Louis doesn't buy it and tells her about all the clues that made him suspicious. A man called John Lamptey died of organ failure when a month before he had passed his medical insurance. Alana was missing her wedding ring, which she never took off, she was drunk, which was weird because she never drank much, and her body was full of GHB, a drug usually used to incapacitate abuse victims. Louis doesn't just think Natalie did it, he fully knows it, so he tells her that if she doesn't admit it, she'll die as well. Louis goes back to watch old family videos after checking his computer is still recording every noise in the cellar. Seeing his dead wife on the screen upsets him, so he rushes back to the cellar and puts his gun in front of Natalie's head, and she finally accepts to confess. She and her sister grew up in a very religious environment, following the teachings of the Bible. When Kathy found out their dad was sleeping with her best friend, she confronted him about it so he abandoned them, leaving them with all this shame. The family became the outcasts of the town for something that wasn't their fault, they were being punished for their father's sins. This is what pushed Kathy into killing herself, Natalie found her in the barn, hanging from the drafters. That's why Natalie has dedicated her life to her and to serving people, and patients would always trust her with their secrets, even the bad ones. All her three victims had done something wrong, John Lamptey had two wives, Jane Spencer lied to the cops about her husband beating her for the divorce money, and Alana had been cheating on her husband. Louis doesn't believe it, but Natalie explains all the clues behind the case, this is why Alana had been found drunk in a hotel bar, dressed to the nines and without her wedding ring, her lover had even visited her at the hospital. Natalie admits having killed the Charleston Three for being sinners and Louis leaves the cellar, unsettled after hearing about his wife's secret. He starts believing Natalie when he goes back to the living room and watches another video, in it, Alana behaves awkwardly when ignoring a call to her cell phone. The confirmation puts Lewis through an emotional breakdown and he starts breaking things around the house as he cries out in fury. Afterward, he gets in his car and leaves the house while Natalie finds a piece of her phone and realizes she can use it as a tool to finally free the tile shard from the floor. Lewis makes it to the lake he used to visit with his wife and is approached by two cops, who ask him about his wounds and his address because they're investigating a call that described a car like his. After checking his license and the trunk of his car, they let him go, and Lewis decides to return home. He enters the cellar and crouches in front of Natalie to tell her she had no right to kill his wife before he had a chance to talk to her, he also asks her to turn herself in. Natalie responds by stabbing him on his shoulder with the floor shard, then she starts kicking him as she tells him she's Kathy now and she won't let him ruin her new happy life. 
Louis manages to remove the shard from his shoulder, but Natalie punches the wound before running out of the room. In the kitchen, she looks for the gun but doesn't find it, so she grabs a knife instead and returns to the cellar. Louis is waiting for her and tries to lock her in again, Natalie puts her arm at the door to stop it. They wrestle for a moment before Louis runs away and makes it to the kitchen, where he finds his gun on the floor. Natalie arrives as he's picking it up and knocks it off his hand before starting a fight with him, eventually, she manages to overpower him and steal the gun, which he points at him. At that moment, they're interrupted by Alondra, who is entering the house with Louis' daughter Summer. Natalie shoots Alondra, then captures Summer when she tries to reach her dad, she points the gun at her head and tells him Summer isn't really his child. But that doesn't matter to Louis, who tells Natalie she doesn't have to turn herself in, he won't say anything to anyone if she doesn't hurt his daughter. Natalie doesn't accept this because the police will trace her call anyway, so Louis tells him he's recorded everything she's said. This distracts Natalie, and Summer takes the chance to bite her arm and escape. Louis wastes no time and jumps on Natalie, throwing her on the floor and choking her until he knocks her out, or so he thinks. As soon as he takes a few steps away, Natalie is standing up again, so Louis shoots her before leaving to find his daughter. He finds Summer hiding in the cellar and takes her away with him. They stop by the office to take the USB stick with the recording and Summer notices Natalie is gone, so Louis rushes her into the garage. He's getting Summer into the car when Natalie finds him and tries to shoot him, but the gun is out of ammo, so they start fighting again as Summer leaves the car and goes outside. Natalie hits Louis with various garden tools until she overpowers him and puts a pitchfork on his chest, intending to kill him. Louis grabs the fork to stop it from stabbing and pushes until he manages to hit Natalie with it, causing her to fall back against the broom he had used earlier to keep the garage door raised. Without the broom to hold it, the door falls on her and traps her body as she falls unconscious. The movie ends with Louis hugging Summer and apologizing to her while calling her his child as the police arrive. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.